Welcome to the final episode of the How to Be Your Possible Self podcast series. I'm going to suggest a few books, not many, that you should invest in for your journey to success, however you define success. Firstly, Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Put it on your must-buy list today. Just do it. No amount of superlatives are enough to emphasise how good this book is. Secondly, Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich. The Daddy of Them All, the book that has directly and indirectly inspired more people to achieve greater heights and more success than any other book I can think of. M. Scott Peck, The Road Less Travelled. Another seminal work that, like Think and Grow Rich, has influenced just about everyone working in the field of personal development. Like Stephen Covey, Scott Peck emphasises the importance of personal character, self-discipline and integrity above so-called get-rich-quick schemes to bring you short-term benefit at the expense of others. Then there's Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad and The Cash Flow Quadrant. The man who has done more to directly inspire and encourage me than anyone else but Brian Tracy. He helped me see that my financial future was not only in my hands, but that I could do something about it. His board games, Cashflow 101 and Cashflow 202, taught me more about finance and taking control of my financial future than my parents, my friends, my years of business experience or my graduate business studies had. I had the very good fortune to meet with him once, shake his hand and engage in about five minutes of chat. I doubt he'd remember me, but I will never forget that meeting. Richard Carlson, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. An excellent little book that serves as a great reminder that nothing is ever as likely to happen as we think it is, and that nothing is as catastrophic as we fear it. Full of wisdom, humour and love. A marvellous book. Then there's Chin Ning Chu's The Secret of the Rainmaker. Subtitled Success Without Stress, Chin Ning's book is a book full of Eastern practical wisdom and insight. She reminds us that in this frantic-paced world we need to relax and put into motion the events which will bring success to us, not run around like headless chickens chasing it. A wonderfully calming, inspiring and encouraging book and a deserved bestseller. Mark Manson, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a a Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life. This is a fabulous book, although it repeats itself a lot, as most North American authors do. Maybe their book contracts specify a word count that they must hit. Mark shares with me a detestation of the oversimplification of the positive psychology movement. He believes, as do I, that we need both ups and downs in our lives if we are to be psychologically balanced. The Pollyanna worldview of the positive psychology advocates means we all have to twist negative events into something positive and affirming. I say no. We must accept these negative events for what they are, not try and turn them into something they are not. And finally, James Clear, Atomic Habits. As James said, decide the type of person you want to be. Prove it to yourself with small wins. The ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes part of your identity. It's one thing to say, I'm the type of person who wants this, It's something very different to say, I'm the type of person who is this. And now, some final words. In an earlier part of this podcast series, I mentioned the PCA acronym. Here, at the end of the series, it seems appropriate to talk about it again. PCA stands for Passion, Commitment and Action, the three cornerstones of any successful life. You can have any two of the three, and with all the best will in the world, you still will not become your possible self. 
Without all three working together in harmony, you will not achieve your dreams. Let's look at each one in turn and see why. Passion. Passion is the fire in the belly. It's the fuel that keeps us going. It's the reason why we want to do something, to be something more than mediocre. Passion is the flame that burns brightly during the long nights of occasional self-doubt. The flame that lights our path when all around is dark. Passion is the aching in the chest that drives us forward, that pushes us onward through the cold, driving rain. Passion is what drives us to forget the pain, forget the disappointments and shoulder the burdens of our journey. Without passion, we are lost. We have not the courage of our convictions. We bend in the slightest breeze and we drift aimlessly. We have not the courage of our convictions. We bend in the slightest breeze and we drift aimlessly. Commitment. Commitment is being there through thick and thin in the sunshine and the rain. Commitment is the extra mile driven, the extra call made, the extra effort willingly given. Commitment is sticking to your chosen path when all around you are the siren calls of distractions, of well-meaning friends offering respite and gentle amusements. Commitment is sticking to your guns when others are telling you you're wrong and then running off a list of reasons why you are wrong. Commitment is smiling at them and still doing what you believe in anyway. Without commitment, you will not have the strength to climb the hill. Without commitment, you will not have the stamina to continue past the mediocre when your legs are weary and your exhausted step is faltering. Without commitment, you will not reach the summit where the air is pure and clean and where the view is breathtaking in its beauty. Action. Action is putting into practice the lessons you have learnt. Action is making happen what you wish to bring into your life. Action is the mechanism by which we draw unto ourselves our destiny. Action is taking the raw material of knowledge and turning it into an object of beauty and delight. Action is what builds up momentum, whereby it becomes impossible to not succeed. Impossible to fail to reach our magnificent destiny. Action is the snowball that gets bigger and faster the further down the hill it rolls. Without action, we are but mere potential. We are could have beens. Without action, we are prey to every woman fancy of others. Without action, we lie adrift, our journey dictated for us by the currents. Without action, we may long to reach a certain port but are unsure if we ever will. Without action, the chance of reaching that port is slim indeed. Without action, we are lost at sea. Without action, we will die a mediocre death. Two of the three won't do. All of the passion and commitment in the world will come to nothing if you don't take action. With action and commitment, you will climb further up the mountain than most others but your heart will not carry you through to the glorious summit. With just passion and action, you will start your journey with all of the best intentions, but obstacles, distractions and discomfort will find you searching for the easier, well-trodden paths that meander with every boulder and only go sideways around the mountain, never up. But with passion, commitment and action, you will receive your own dreams summit. With passion, commitment and action, you will achieve the unbelievable. With passion, commitment and action, you will become your possible self. Now do it. Finally, thank you all very much for listening to this podcast series, and I hope you've learned something of value to you. If you'd like to listen to the podcast series again, head to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and search for the podcast by name. That is, how to be your possible self. You can email me at lee at leehopkins.com if something you've heard today deserves a conversation. Please make your email subject possible self. Thanks. That's because I receive around 60 emails a day and I'd hate to lose yours in amongst them. Until we meet again, ciao.